Hey everyone, Courant here, welcoming you to something very different from me. A new Let's Play, which is not so different, but a new Let's Play that is not of an RPG, which is very different. Welcome to day one of Stardew Valley. What we're going to be doing is we are going to be creating a new game, and we are going to be playing through the first year. What I'm going to be doing is recording a few episodes at a time, slicing and dicing them, and making them into daily uploads every day during the summer until we get to the end of year one, which is 112 episodes. So, incidentally, I'm about to make my longest Let's Play, <laughs> in a sense, at least. So, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be playing this very casually. I'm not going to be going hardcore as far as super informative Let's Plays are concerned, which is typically what I try to do. But I am going to be having fun with it. I might look up a few things here and there, particularly when it comes to birthdays and gifts and things like that. Because I want to make my villagers happy, but I'm not really going to be going hardcore, super knowledgeable, I have to do everything right now sort of stuff. I'm just going to kind of take the game as it goes and see where it goes effectively. So let's go ahead and create ourselves a new character, shall we? And what we're going to be doing is, as, as the charm really sets in, is we are going to be creating a man. So we're going to keep it male. And we're going to give our male a cat because we are going to be role-playing as Chrono. Of course, the Chrono, the hero of Chrono Trigger. So yeah, definitely. And essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be reattempting something that... I tried to do a year or so ago on stream, and that was, well, stream this game for a good bit of time. That ended up not working out for a variety of technical reasons, so hopefully the re the technical stuff won't be such a problem this time. Now, as far as my favorite thing, I'm trying to think what Chrono really liked, I guess, is his favorite thing. I can't think of anything as far as cooking or such is concerned. Um, I don't know if we'll go... I don't know if I can type this in. Ah, right, crap. Let's see if I can sneak this in. Uh, do I have enough characters? There we go, saving the world! <laughs> I'm not sure how that's gonna pop up exactly, but still. Alright, so we want a cat. And I want to... see about putting a few things into play here to try to make this as close to Chrono as I can get it. First off, obviously, is the hair. Because, as I rather discovered actually when I was getting this ready, is that, yeah, Chrono actually, if you set it up right, and we're going to see if I actually can set it up right here, Chrono actually can have very red hair, very much like Chrono actually does. So that's what I'm going to go for. I think this should do. Yeah, there we go. And as far as his outfit, um, let's see. Well, first off, let's move over to the shirt here because I want him to be, I'm trying to, I've got to admit, I'm kind of doing this a little bit from memory, but I want it to be as close to what he has, kind of what he wears normally as possible. So I think he tends to have a blue top and, oh God, no, we don't need to give him I give him a beard, I give him a mustache, any number of accessories. Oh, we're not going to give him any of it, by the way. Um, because... Oh, wow. Okay, actually, yeah, let's give him that, because I think he does actually need that. Uh, let's see. I think that'll match fairly well. I just got to remember what color pants he had. I should have, really what I should have done is pulled up a picture of him... It kind of like the picture you would have in the the SNS box art or something like that, just to be able to take care of that little issue. Okay, next, also what we're gonna do is in one of the later episodes or one of the later updates of Stardew Valley, it gave you ability to do a number of different farms instead of the just the standard farm, which gives you a lot of land to do whatever you want with. You've got Riverland, which mentions islands and riverbanks. You've got the forest farm, which well, forest. Hilltop Farm, which is rocky terrain. I've never done that one or really seen that one done, honestly. And then the Wilderness Farm, which is lots of monsters. 
Given the fact that we're naming it Guardia Farm, I'm going to choose the Forest Farm because I think that would rest the best with his just overall motif. So I think that should... Whoops, no, no, not, I don't want to change his pants color. I think that should pretty well do it. So if anybody wants to critique it, the form, it's all me because I sit here trying to remember what he looks like. And maybe that scarf is yellow, actually, now that I think about it. Um, I don't think you can change the color of the scarf, though, so that'll just have to stay there. And yeah, let's go ahead and start our adventure with Chrono. Now, as you might have noticed in the intro, we can indeed skip the intro, but I'm not going to. And for my very special grandson, I want you to have this sealed envelope. I think this text is proceeding automatically. No, no, don't open it yet. Have patience. Now listen close. There will come a day when you feel crushed by the burden of modern life. And sorry, text is cutting out there. I tried to fix it the best I could. I may have to see what I can do. And your bright spirit will fade before a growing emptiness. When that happens, my boy, you'll be ready for this gift. Few notes. You notice that religious icon up there. We'll see that later in the game. You see a scimitar. You also saw a picture of, I assume, grandmother up there. A few years later, we're working at Joja. Join us and thrive. Yeah, pretty much this is basically Walmart of a sort. Also, hey, Woody. Why are you sticking your tongue out like that? And here we are, falling asleep in our cubicle. Our very drab and gross cubicle, honestly. We hate our lives. We've been oppressed by the corporate machine. We have cameras watching over us all the time to make sure that we don't dawdle. And there's the letter that Grandpa gave us, ready for us to open. If you're reading this, you must be in dire need of a change. The same thing happened with me long ago. I'd lost sight of what mattered most in life, real connections with other people and nature. So I dropped everything and moved to the place I truly belong. I've enclosed the deed to that place. My pride and joy, Guardia Farm. It's located in Stardew Valley on the southern coast. It's the perfect place to start your new life. This is my most precious gift of all, and now it's yours. I know you'll honor the family name, my boy. Good luck. Love, Grandpa. P.S. If Lewis is still alive, say hi to the old guy for me, will ya? Okay. And thus begins our journey to Stardew Valley. A whole new life. Getting away from the corporate monster and creating what we want for ourselves. Hello, you must be Chrono. I'm Robin, the local carpenter. Mayor Lewis sent me here to fetch you and show you the way to your new home. He's there right now, tidying things up for your arrival. The farm's right over here if you'll follow me. Tidying things up, you say? This is Guardia Farm. Yeah, just a little messy. What's the matter? Sure, it's a bit overgrown, but there's some good soil underneath that mess. With a little dedication, you'll have it cleaned up in no time. More like a few days. Hey, 
And here we are, your new home. Ah, the new farmer. Welcome, I'm Lewis, mayor of Pelican Town. You know, everyone's been asking about you. It's not every day that someone new moves in. It's quite a big deal. So, you're moving into your grandfather's old cottage. It's a good house, very rustic. I don't know why he's got rustic in quotations there. Kind of worries me. Rustic? That's one way to put it. Crusty might be a little more apt, though. Eh, there we go. Rude! Don't listen to her, Chrono. She's just trying to make you dissatisfied so that you buy one of her house upgrades. Huh. Anyway, you must be tired from the long journey. You should get some rest. Tomorrow, you ought to explore the town a bit and introduce yourself. The townspeople would appreciate that. Oh, I almost forgot. If you have anything to sell, just place it in this box here. I'll come by during the night to collect it. Well, good luck! <laughs> and thus, we begin day one. We come equipped with a variety of different tools here which we'll use in different capacities along the farm. This is Chrono. He's a newcomer. There are five categories you can actually fill out, and you will over time. Farming, mining, foraging, fishing, and combat. Pretty self-explanatory, generally. Once you hit level 5 and level 10 in each of those skills, you can get a special skill, which is noted by those long boxes there. We'll get to that in time, but obviously not yet. Even close. This is everybody in town. Say hi, everybody. We know two people. We know Robin, of course, who we just met, and also Mayor Lewis. But part of our job for the first, at least, few days is meeting everybody else, meaning everybody else. Here's the farm. Here's everywhere else. Lots of places we can go and visit to start out with. Some of them aren't open to us yet, such as, for instance, the community center, the mines over here these areas. We can't get to those yet, but we can certainly go to a good number of places starting out, including Wizard's Tower. Yay. Oh, also, let's see, uh, we've got our list of items that we can craft, and we've also got a list of items that are in the game. Ultimately, items that we can sell, and you see there's a lot of different categories. Fish, artifacts, minerals, cooking, Got lots of dishes we can cook. I've cooked very few of them, so it'll be interesting to see some of the other stuff. And then achievements that we can get as each of our characters. You see them all there. We'll eventually get to those too, I think. You've also got an area where you can change settings if you want to. I'm generally not going to change these around too much, just because I want to. I just want to keep it as it is. Okay. Excuse me, sorry. So... The, I've got this game windowed, which might explain why it looks a little weird. I've tried to get it as windowed best as I can to make it all work well, but unfortunately it's not the easiest job in the world, but you can. You notice zoom things out a little bit if you want to, so we'll do that. Kind of gives a little more space, I guess, for everything to pop up here. Alright, let's see. Is there anything else I really want to tinker with here? Oh, uh, not particularly. You've got lots of activities you can do, but honestly, there's not a whole lot of real specificity to this. So you got that. You've also got, you can exit if you want, but obviously we're not going to. What we're going to start with is opening this. 15 parsnip seeds. You received 15 parsnip seeds. Here's a little something to get you started, Mayor Lewis. Why, thank you, Mayor. And this also opens up, you notice it's pointing to an exclamation point there. That is our journal that we can open up. I'm using a controller. You can open up with select. So we've got a couple of quests we can do. Getting started, cultivate, and harvest a parsnip. If you want to become a farmer, you have to start with the basics. Use your hoe to till the soil, then use a seed packet on the tilled soil to sow a crop. Water every day until the crop's ready for harvest. Yeah. 
So we're going to be a farmer to start out with, but we've also got introductions. Be a nice gesture to introduce yourself around town. Some people might be anxious to greet the new farmer. 28 people. Yeah, we're, we're going to be spending a little bit of time at that. But what you'll want to do every day here is check a couple things. For one, check the weather report because it'll tell you what the weather's going to be for the next day coming up. And it's going to be sunny, so pretty much good farming weather. You also want to check the fortune teller because the fortune teller will tell you, obviously, what your fortune is for today. So the fortunes, well, fortune teller, spirits are in good humor, so we've got a little extra luck, which is good. There are some times where you'll get really good luck, and that affects a lot of stuff in this game. It affects particularly drops in the mine in terms of minerals, in terms of enemy drops, and lots of stuff. There's a metric ton of things that this luck essentially encompasses. And for the most part in this game, the luck is going to be garbage. Just FYI. <laughs> All right, so another thing that you'll want to check, especially early on, is stuff like living off the land. You'll get cooking shows, things like that. All right, so let's see what the tip is. Chop wood and search for wild forage to earn some cash while waiting for your first harvest, which is a pretty good plan, especially the foraging part, because you can do that without giving up. You notice that green bar to the right there is energy. Every action you take, chopping or cutting down trees or taking out stone or hoeing, all take up energy. If you run out of energy, you're pretty much out of luck. So you'll want to be careful with that. Now, what we're going to be doing essentially for today is cleaning out a little plot. And I don't want to get to, I don't want to clean out too big of one, honestly, because that'll take up too much of our energy and we just don't have it. So, okay, I think that'll do for this area here. Now, let's go ahead and use our pickaxe to get rid of all the rocks here. And then switch over to our axe to clean out all the wood. Okay, that didn't take up as much energy as I feared, so that's good, I guess. All right, and then we use our hoe to start digging in the dirt. And I figure it's a good idea. Go ahead and plant all 15 of said parsnips. Might as well. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a nice, lovely plot here with no music to accompany us, unfortunately. The music kind of kicks in at random points. I have thought about maybe putting in other music while we're doing this, just to kind of keep it a little bit more constant. But that runs into a couple potential issues. One of them being copyright. Another being that's what caused some of the problems with my playthrough to begin with. All right, so once you get done with planting seeds, obviously you need to water them. And especially in the early game, you're going to be doing a lot of this yourself, so have fun, I guess. <laughs> All right, so once we're done with watering the crops, you only have to water them once a day, fortunately, so you don't really have to worry about that so much. Let's go ahead and see about cleaning out some other parts of at least this little bit of the farmland anyway, and you'll notice... Uh, lots of, obviously, weeds. You've got trees around here. You've got tree branches. You've got all the rocks and everything. So you'll want to clear them out as your energy essentially allows you to do. And even though it might seem a little weird, you want to keep all this stuff. So one thing that I'm going to kind of goal myself toward is collecting enough wood to create our first item, essentially. And that's going to be a treasure chest. Because if we don't have treasure chest, we're in trouble. Now, fortunately, it doesn't take much to make a treasure chest. It takes, okay, 50 wood's a little more than I thought, honestly. So we're going to have to cut down some trees to do this. Now, cutting down trees is going to take a lot of your energy in the early going, so you'll want to be careful. The good news is, though, cutting down trees gets you plenty of wood, so there's that at least. So we may be able to get enough to get a treasure chest. If so, that'd be great. If not, I'm not going to sweat it too much for this first day. As you cut down trees and stuff, you notice obviously things will drop off of them. You want to try to keep those things, especially early on as you start the game. You want to try to, well, like I said, keep as much stuff as you can so that you can get the benefit of having all these goodies. All right, so good. We've got enough for our first treasure chest. Awesome. So what we're going to do, uh, I don't know. I typically like to keep my treasure chests inside usually, but there's certainly some merit to put them outside too. 
So let's go ahead, build our first treasure chest. All you have to do, fortunately, is just hit the button. It doesn't take any energy, which is great. So we're going to build our first treasure chest. Move over here. Uh, you move controller-wise, by the way, by using the left and right shoulder buttons, essentially. And we're going to go ahead and start putting all of our detritus in here. Now, unlike other storage methods, treasure chests have naturally, I believe, let's see... Okay, it's 36 slots. We start out with 12, so you'll want to be careful with space management, too. All right, so now that we're done with that, let's see. Let's go ahead and clear a little bit more, I think. And then we'll go out and explore the town, because once we run out of energy, I kind of want to explore places. And we're going to start, essentially, by exploring the farm around here. Okay, so I don't really have enough energy left to deal with the treasure, or with the treasure, with the trees around here, but I do want to go ahead and take care of these rocks. The game is nice in that if you run in front of trees or stuff that occludes your view, the game will kind of go transparent there to sort of show you, hey, this is what you're seeing. All right, let's go ahead and take care of that, and I think that'll do for now. Ah, there we go, there's the music. So obviously... We, well, we don't have nearly enough room, particularly to cultivate everything that we have here, which is fine. All right, so let's take a little bit of tour of a little bit of a tour of the farm to start with. It's uh, actually I want to switch over to my scythe because using your scythe does not use any energy, which is great. So that as we travel, if we need to make more room, then we can do that fairly easily. Okay, welcome to where our cat's gonna go eventually, because we will get a cat, just not yet. Chrono's got a cat in Chrono Trigger, so that's what I'm basing it on. You notice, of course, lots of trees and other such things around here. So if you want to clear out your fodder here, that's fine. There is something to be said for leaving some of it for later, but that's mostly when it comes to the grass that's right here. You might want to leave it for later, for leave it for something that you can build a little bit later. But for now, I'm just going to kind of carve a path. This is a dilapidated building whose use will be revealed a fair bit later, and it's pretty freaking fantastic. So you definitely want to open this as soon as you can. Here we have a cave, which right now has no usage whatsoever, but we'll use it later also. Go around here, you notice we got these big logs here that we can't do anything with. We will need to get a better axe in order to deal with all of those. Anything, these big tree trunks, big logs, thing like that you will need to open them up a little bit later with a more powerful axe. We've also got this up here, which I think in the woodland farm, yeah, leads to this weird looking tomb here. Pick up the note, wait for my return on the dawn of your third year. We're obviously not gonna see that in this playthrough, but it's kind of a signal that, hey, Grandpa is coming back in, well, a form that is gonna be revealed later. All of these big tree trunks here have hardwood in them, which is obviously a better form of wood. And the fact that we have that right now that we could access if we get a good enough axe is phenomenal. Otherwise, you have to kind of wait until something else opens up. So it's pretty good that you can have it a little bit earlier than I suppose is typical. And you also, and also by the way, these over here, the big tree trunks over here, refill every single day. So definitely a good thing to have. Now, unfortunately, most of the rest of our farm is just is, is very messy, and I've got to admit, there are little parts of my OCD that are screaming at me, you gotta clean this up! But I don't have the energy for it right now, and it's gonna be a little bit before we can start actually cooking. Okay, so as we leave the farm, we head south here first off, and we'll probably meet some more people as we go along. I just heard a door open, I think. Alright, so let's go in here, and we meet... Hi, Jazz! Hi! She is the little girl that lives here, and we see the matriarch of the family right over here. Marnie! Ah, Mayor Lewis told me about you just arrived. I'm Marnie! Hi, Marnie. Yes, she will sell produce. Or, well, produce. She'll sell animals and such. A little bit later. But that's not opened up just yet. Well, the building to do it certainly isn't opened up just yet. Alright, if we head down here, we find ourselves a nice little cottage. And it's Leia's cottage, but we can't get in because we're not her friends. It's kind of interesting because most places you can get into the house, but their bedrooms are closed off until you befriend them. But Leia, her whole house is closed off because it's just 
her house. She doesn't have any extra bedrooms or anything like that. It'll be the same case for a couple of other people we'll meet, but not very many. As we wander up here, we see pretty much just general scenery by and large. We got a nice lake over here with a dock that eventually we'll be able to fish off of. Okay, Leah might be out here sometimes, but she's not there yet. That's too bad. We've also got another nice little forest over here and the wizard's tower, which, yeah, have fun with that. Uh, we've also, we've got this area up here that we can't access yet. So ultimately, yeah, not much we can do, but we can go down to the wizard's tower and see about meeting him. I don't remember if we're actually able to meet him just yet. I think he may open up a couple of days or so into the game, but well, it doesn't hurt us to go and check anyway. Okay, so yeah, we can't access Wizard yet. Something else I want to do, and I don't know if I'll be able to do this now either, because I might have run out of time, is go back up to town and see if we can buy some stuff from the shopkeeper. Shop might be closed already, because I think it might close at 5. If it closes at 7, I'm probably not going to get there in time either, but we'll see. Might be better to just go this way, actually. Because then I don't have to worry about running into all the uh, stuff. Oh, there's Leah. Hi, Leah. Leah. Hello, it's nice to meet you. Hi, Leah. In my private playthrough of Stardew Valley, Leah was my waifu. I'm probably going to waifu somebody else in this one, though, whenever we get around to it, which is going to be forever and ever from now. But, I don't know. I like her. She's a more of an outdoorsy sort of art. She's very much into art and that sort of thing. Oh, Pierre's still open. Nice. Or oh, he's not open. But we can buy a new backpack for 2,000 gold that we don't have. Okay. Yeah, alright, so he's... He already finished up shopping, but... Hey, it's Mr. Chrono, the new farmer. I'm Pierre, owner of the local general store. If you're looking for seeds, my shop is the place to go. I'll also buy produce from, produce from you at a good price. You know, you might be thinking, why is he shaking while saying that? Well... It's because he has a very active competitor who we will meet also. So this is the calendar. This shows events going on in Stardew Valley. It also shows people's birthdays. Lewis's birthday is the first birthday that we're going to experience on week one of spring. So we'll need to prepare a birthday gift accordingly. You've got the Egg Festival on the 13th and the Flower Dance on the 24th. And you've got lots of other birthdays here. You can kind of spoil who some people are before you even meet them. All right, so that's the calendar. We've also got a help wanted area here that we can do various tasks at, but we can't really do anything with that yet. All right, so everything's locked pretty much now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to travel around and see about meeting people. We've already met Pierre, and maybe some of his family are around here. I'm not sure. Okay, that's his wife. Hello, you must be Chrono, the new farmer. I'm Caroline. Hi, Caroline. And I think we might also be able to... Okay, now his kids are not around. All right, that's fine. So probably the best place to go meet people, now that it's kind of tending more toward the evening time, is going to be at the bar. Well, the saloon. But it's pretty much the bar. Now that it's nighttime, that place is open, and we can go meet the new blacksmith. Uh, hi, I'm Clint. Hi, Clint. All right, so yeah, like I said, this is the best place to hang out and meet people. This is Pam. Hey, kid, the name's Pam. She is the local bus driver, but unfortunately, the bus is broken right now. This is Gus, owner of the saloon. Hello there, I'm Gus, chief chef and owner of the Stardrop Saloon. And we have his assistant, Emily. Whew, I can read it on your face. You're gonna love it here in Pelican Town. If you're ever looking for something to do in the evening, stop by the saloon. That's where I work. We're here already, Emily. Hi. Now, one thing actually you can do is... Actually, can you buy stuff from Gus yet? Yeah, you can. Just talk to this silver thing, which I guess is supposed to be the register, and you can buy stuff. Now, we don't have much money to buy stuff with yet, so... Maybe not the best idea, especially since it's pretty expensive. But some of this stuff is really good for if you want to gift give and you don't want to cook or aren't able to cook stuff for yourself. That's a good way to gift people early in the game. Hi Shane. I don't know you. Why are you talking to me? It's interesting. Shane comes off as one of the least likable characters in the game to start out with. But his backstory is so, so bad. So tragic, really. And obviously we'll expand on that as we become better friends with him. 
Okay, so not as many people out as I hoped would be. Let's peek by a couple of other places while we still got some time. This is Mayor Lewis's house. So we're not going to go by there. We've already met him. Okay, we can't go into... Can we go in here and talk to... We cannot. Okay, so pretty much just about everywhere is locked. So not really going to be able to meet many other people right now, unfortunately. But still, a good time to kind of go around... Catch the sights a little bit, see a bit of the town. There will be other parts of the town, like I said, that we'll be introduced to as we essentially go through. Okay, so the reason I was withholding some energy was I was hoping I could get to Pierre's in time, be able to buy some more seeds and plant some stuff, but unfortunately we weren't. What we do see here, though, is our first piece of, of forage. You can, you'll see these, they'll be pretty distinctive, particularly at night, but they'll be pretty distinctive overall. You can sort of see them standing out, that you can pick them up, and you'll want to keep some of these too. They're not great for, say, energy purposes, perhaps. I mean, if you go over to them, no energy. The leek actually is decent for energy, and dandelion's a little better than I thought, but don't eat a leek, because, or don't eat a uh, daffodil, because it does nothing for you. But still, they're pretty decent item. I'm probably going to keep these because we don't have much time left today, so I'm not really worried all that much about energy. Something else you'll want to do if you can, or if you're able to to begin with, is start making torches, which we don't have enough sap, sadly. We have to chop down trees to get that, and I'm not sure I've got enough energy left to chop down a tree. Let me give it a shot. Oops, that would be my hope. That's not a not an axe, Eric. Okay, I'm going to barely make it. I don't think the trees drop sap just yet, though. Uh, actually, they do, because that's sap. We can leave it on the ground, fortunately, and just kind of come back and collect it later. All right, so go ahead and deposit all you guys here. And I think I'm going to grab one of the dandelions to sell. I don't think it's going to sell for much of anything, but still... Okay, so you notice what I did there. I just sorted out inventory. You can sort out the inventory by hitting select. And if you want to sort out the inventory of your boxes, hit this whatever it is button, and it'll automatically organize your stuff. You can also color code your treasure chest if you want. I'm not going to do that just yet, but you can. And you can throw stuff away if you'd like, but I'm not going to do that either. All right, so like Mayor Lewis said, if we want to sell stuff, let's dump it into the box here, and that'll sell it. Which means we'll make a wee bit of money. Not very much, but a wee bit. Okay, so we got six sap out of that, so... Good, okay. We stored the wood that we had, so we can take out... Take out three, because you noticed the torch recipe is one wood and two sap. So we can build three of them, and I'm going to sit one right here. I think I'm going to sit one right here. Try not to burn down the forest. Let's sit one. You notice it gives off a little bit of light, so not a great amount, but a, you know, decent enough. Let's sit one right there, so we can at least get a little illumination on our farm, although it doesn't illuminate all of our crops. With that, um, yeah, I think that'll pretty much do it for day one. We didn't do all that much as far as a like, big time farm stuff, but we did at the very least get started and got to explore a little bit of Stardew Valley. So, well, this makes for a bit of a lengthy first episode. The pre next episodes will be a bit shorter, of course, because we don't have the introduction stuff, at least as much. But yeah, thank you guys for coming in. And hopefully you guys will have fun with me as we experience Stardew Valley. So, have a good night, everyone. And I'll see y'all tomorrow.